Welcome to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. Good morning. Happy Monday. Instagram is ahead of Facebook. Instagram folks are already there. <laughs> Click on the draw today. Look, we brought Spaniels back. Instagram, I know you can't see them as well. Facebook, look, we brought Spaniels back. <laughs> Itchy Abby. When she gets a tiny bit stressed. Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. What better day than today to talk about how to keep our heart healthy and how to keep their hearts healthy. Further down the table, this is George, and that's Gabby, and further down there is Stuart, who is actually our dog with stage D mitral valve disease, um, heart disease, and uh, he was here, but he decided to move, so George stepped up to the plate. Anyway, I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about throughout the week, and I just decided that there, I had something else planned, and I said, you know what, it's Valentine's Day. We need to talk about heart health because it's, we can't live without it. <laughs> so really, really critically important. Um, so I picked a bunch of supplements out of the warehouse, and I thought about what do I do, particularly for Stuart, to help with his longevity, and he was in uh, diagnosed in heart failure and moved up to stage D, which is the last stage of mitral valve heart disease, in November of 2020, and he was given three months to live. So we are now 15, going on 16 months in from that diagnosis. And he still runs and plays and eats well. He's lost some weight, which is something that we do see in late stage heart failure. It's called cardiac cachexia. Um, so he's lost a lot of muscle, but he's still going really strong. And we're really happy with uh, his, his lack of progression of the disease since that time that he was diagnosed. I talked to my cardiologist by text the other night and I told him that uh, Stewie was still racing around and he frankly was shocked. And that is uh, a, a testament to uh, what we are doing to keep him healthy with diet. And I'm sorry, I've got Instagram over here and I've got Facebook over here. So <laughs> I feel like the ping pong match. Um, so uh, I think it's a testament to how well we can uh, modulate what is going on with the disease with these animals and uh, keep them feeling well for much longer periods of time than what their expiration date is that we are given. So um, one thing I will say, uh, it's still Dental Health Month, guys. Hopefully everyone is still doing their daily treatments using your little calendar for Dental Health Month. Our guys all got treated this morning. This is actually the dental spray. Our guys got the drops this morning. I kind of like the spray a lot, but um, we have both. So everybody got treated this morning. Very important to do that because that is part of keeping the heart healthy, keeping the mouth healthy because all those bacteria that are in the mouth get into the bloodstream, go to the heart valves, the kidneys, and the liver. Where are you going, Stuart? Stuart's being a little antsy. We're gonna let him get down. You two can stay here. Okay, so let's talk about some of the things that we have. Oh, another quick thank you. Um, Maria Cucina sent me the 2022 Burrow Buddy calendar. This is a rescue group for donkeys. <laughs> they have hundreds and thousands of them and 
I'm so excited, so really happy to get this. So thank you very much for the donkey calendar because we all know that they've kind of stolen a piece of my heart. All right, so things that we can do to keep our pet's heart healthy. So one of the things that we have very clear evidence um, which is a great anti-inflammatory for the heart is omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids, oh, I didn't grab the phytoplankton. Um, omega-3 fatty acids are just amazingly good for heart health, brain health, and joint health. So we have a lot of different options. We have the Iceland Pure oils, which come in the salmon oil and the sardine anchovy oil. With my own dogs, we do one month on one product and then the next month on the other product. Um, and I think that in the past, people have been afraid to use omega-3s at doses that were high enough to actually make a difference. So don't be afraid to go a little bit higher than what the labeled dose is, because a lot of times we find that um, they'll actually do better. And in researching Cancer Week, I found that we could use doses 10 times higher than what the labeled doses are in order to really get that anti-inflammatory effect for cancer patients. Um, another option, if your pets won't do the liquid, we have gel caps, the Derma 3 gel caps, and these are a white fish oil. So a lot of people have better luck getting those into their pets. Um, let's see, so we can also do treats that will be high in omega-3, so something like a fish bite. We've got all the Icelandic Plus um, cod skin chews, red skin chews, that sort of thing. And then we have the Dr. Harvey's Wild Alaskan Salmon Bites, and these are single ingredient treats and very, very high in taurine and omega-3s. Uh, we know that like treats like, so we have tons of different uh, freeze-dried heart treats on the website. We've got beef, turkey, and chicken from Momentum. We also have the Farmhounds Beef Heart Strips. So lots of ways to um, you know, let your pets have really high quality healthy treats that are species appropriate and actually going to help treat the disease that we're trying to either prevent or keep under control. Um, so while we're talking about omega-3s, which are EPA and DHA, let's talk green lip mussels. So greenlit mussels are actually um, much more nutritious and the um, healthy parts of the greenlit mussel are much more concentrated in this than they are in other marine oils and marine products. So the greenlit mussel actually has, uh, a, besides the EPA and DHA, it has something called ETA, which is icosatetraenoic acid. So it's like an omega-4, whereas the other ones are omega-3s. And it uh, decreases production of cyclooxygenase, and that's an enzyme that slows the development of inflammation. So we know that this uh, mitral valve disease that we see in our dogs and myocarditis that we see in our dogs and cats um, are an inflammatory problem. So we definitely want to keep inflammation down. Uh, greenlit mussel also contains furan fatty acids. Uh, they are antioxidants that inhibit the production of immune chemicals that cause inflammation. So it's, it, there's a lot packed into that. So you can use a greenlit mussel powder, you can use greenlit mussel treats, you can use greenlit mussel oil, but you're going to get a lot packed into um, a very tiny little bit of uh, either food or oil that you need to get into your pet. These things are just as good for cats. I'm not talking about just dogs today. This is heart health across the board and actually this includes us. So if you have a heart murmur or a heart arrhythmia or um, heart disease runs in your family, you could do just as well to take a lot of these supplements or consider looking for something similar in the on the human side. Um, okay, so we also use our senior formula which has green lip muscle in it it also has deer antler velvet, which stimulates stem cells. Stem cells are very important for regeneration. And so we're trying to regenerate whatever we can and keep cells in the body healthy for as long as possible. And then it also has um, ginseng in it. And ginseng, it helps with circulation, particularly circulation from the heart to the brain. So uh, very important, particularly for our senior animals, but anything we can do to improve circulation with animals whose hearts are not working as well, critically important. Okay, uh, CoQ10. We all know that I'm a huge fan of CoQ10 for animals with heart disease. Uh, 
and I use doses that are much higher than what traditional veterinarians recommend for heart disease. The reason for that was a study that came out of, I believe, Thailand a few years ago where they actually took dogs with heart disease and enlarged hearts and the only thing they gave them, everything else stayed the same, the only thing that they did was give them CoQ10 in high doses and they actually saw the heart shrink. So for um, mo general health, most uh, veterinarians will say one milligram or one mill equivalent of CoQ10 uh, per pound of body weight. We are looking at going at five to 10 times that and you really can't overdo it. Uh, my dad had Parkinson's disease and I had him on 1200 milligrams of CoQ10 twice a day because the antioxidant function for the brain and the heart and the joints is so critical. So for dogs under 20 pounds, uh, we'll do either 60 or 100 milligrams twice a day over 20 pounds. 20 to 40, we'll do about 200 twice a day. When you get uh, above 40 pounds, um, then we just kind of keep doubling from there. Okay, um, colostrum, bovine colostrum, really important for the immune system. So if we have a really well-functioning immune system, that is going to help decrease inflammation. It's going to help decrease infection on the heart valves or inflammation in the heart. So, um, and I'm, all these things that I'm talking about are things that are part of the regimen for our dogs and all the ones who were, well, George is old, he's 13, but even the younger dogs are on these products, even the senior product, I use it across the board. Gabby is five, I believe, and Forrest obviously is a youngster, but they are taking these products as well because I want to build up their heart health. I want them to have a good immune system. I want them to not have inflammation in their systems. So, um, we're, we're kind of using this stuff across the board. Um, vitamin D. So this vitamin D3 is made for small dogs and cats, and, and it would be really hard to overdose them at a toxic level with a product uh, of this strength. Our dogs, I did test their vitamin D levels to see where they are, and they each require three to four drops a day. That's not much at all, but that's when they're on a completely balanced diet. If I'm using a diet that is not completely balanced and doesn't have vitamin D already in it, then I would add this at a higher dose. But you can, uh, the vitamin, I didn't bring over a vitamin D test, but you can get a blood test drawn to see what the vitamin D levels are in your pet, and then that would give you an exact amount of vitamin D that you would want to add to their diet. Okay. Most dogs with heart disease do have low vitamin D, just like most dogs with cancer. Most senior dogs, uh, just at, like we age and we're, our bodies are not uh, doing as great a job at making our own CoQ10, making our own vitamin D. That's why we need to start adding these things in uh, more often the older they get. Hugh's nice enough to bring me the vitamin D test kit. This vitamin D test kit, you can get the tests from us if your veterinarian doesn't have it, but you do have to take the test kit to your veterinarian, have them draw the blood, spin it down, and send the test kit out. So it's not a, a home test kit. You do have to get blood drawn. Okay. Um, so another thing that can be very helpful, there's a lot of herbs that can really help with heart disease. And I think this has made a big difference with Stewie just in the last month because we started adding on herbs that will help uh, decrease blood pressure, help increase blood flow, basically make the circulation work a little bit better. So one of those is Hawthorne. The formula CV um, from RX Vitamins does have Hawthorne in it, but it also has carnitine and taurine, which we're gonna talk about. Uh, it has a little bit of vitamin E, it has DMG, magnesium, potassium, and selenium, all things that are uh, really essential for good muscle function. So particularly in horses that are on poor forage, poor pasture, older horses, we find that a lot of them are lacking in vitamin D or vitamin E and selenium. So those are kind of critical components of good muscle function. So with that said, we also have uh, we have this for horses as well, but this is a new vitamin E oil made from uh, sunflower seed. And um, this is just a liquid that you can add to the diet. So particularly 
We're going to put together some videos where we're going to take ground meat, organ, and bone products and then add the supplements to get them balanced out to help those of you who are saying, well, I can get this wonderful ground meat, bone, organ, not complete. How do I make that complete? And so this would be one of the components as well as that vitamin D3 would be a component for that. So the two most important amino acids for heart health and mus heart muscle function are taurine and carnitine. So with the whole DCM debacle with the grain-free foods, one of the things that was talked about a lot was low taurine levels. And we know from back in the 1980s when um, cats were starting to eat a lot more canned cat food and dry cat food before they figured out that they had to add taurine into cat food because we took cats who are obligate carnivores they need to have a high meat diet and we switched them over and started feeding them a whole bunch of corn and grains and things that were not species appropriate and we had a lot of cats when i first came out of school in the 1980s that were developing dcm or dilated cardiomyopathy and it was because they didn't have enough taurine in their diets because they were being fed a diet that was not species appropriate unfortunately we still feed a lot of of diets to both dogs and cats that are not species appropriate. The pet food companies now add in taurine to make up for the fact that they're not feeding our pets meat, which is what they really need to be eating. We're also discovering that there are some breeds, i.e. golden retrievers, uh, that seem to not, for some reason, to be able to make enough taurine or to utilize the taurine in their system. And we're having to supplement them with a lot of taurine, even if they're on a raw diet, to get them up to where we need them to be um, and get our test levels to be where we want them to be. But if I had a breed, well, I do, <laughs> my breed is prone to mitral bowel disease, which is not quite as linked to taurine as dilated cardiomyopathy. So if I was still raising Dobermans, which is what I had before these guys, I, at this point in my life, would know that they needed to be on all these supplements and I would have them on high taurine supplementation. So if I had a breed like a Doberman, uh, Irish Wolfhound, Great Dane, any of those uh, larger breeds, actually Cocker Spaniels even can, are prone to dilated cardiomyopathy, I would start them on taurine supplements pretty early in life and I would just keep them on them consider measuring taurine levels, but I don't even know if you have to. Taurine is something that doesn't have a toxic dose. You can't overdose it. Um, so if you have a breed who's prone to heart dilated cardiomyopathy or you have a dog with di dilated cardiomyopathy, throw a lot of taurine at them. Also a species appropriate diet, heart treats, those kinds of things. All right, and then one of our new additions, I, I just discovered this for Stuart, and this is one of the things that we just added in in the past month, month and a half, is this dog greens, and we now have this in the warehouse because I liked it so much. I said to Gwen, hey, call that company, let's get this stuff in here. Um, so this stuff is organic barley grass, organic wheat grass, organic alfalfa, organic kelp, California spirulina, organic chlorella, and organic Irish moss. And this is basically a superfood. This is like the super greens, that, which was a human product that I used to buy um, when I was you know, grinding their food and adding supplements in. But this has natural sources of CoQ10, omega-3 fatty acid, gamma linolenic acid, um, chlorophyll, xanthophyll, SOD, which is superoxide dismutase, again, another antioxidant, uh, B vitamins, vitamins A, C, D, E, F, and K. Remember, we just said that um, uh, E and D are very important for heart health. And um, actually vitamin C is a wonderful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. So this is a nice, 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 uh, you need a little teaspoon a day. So it's a really nice product that you can just mix in with their food. They don't seem to mind it at all. Um, and I love this stuff. I actually think this is something that should be going into my morning juice along with my lion's mane mushroom. <laughs> all right, so there you go. Keep your pet's hearts healthy, keep your own heart healthy. Have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Go uh, do something special today with your significant other or with your pet. Um, you know, take them for a special walk, go on a special hike, just something, something fun. Something a little out of the ordinary today. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow.